So how do you add Tailwind to an existing React app? Let's have a look. So first off, I'm going to the Tailwind CSS and their docs, which are actually pretty good. And they describe a couple of different steps that you need to take in order to add Tailwind. There is the Tailwind CLI that you can use and basically install it into your project and run the init command, which will then generate a Tailwind config for you, which you can then customize by adding what path should be purged by the post compilation process. You can also use post CSS, which a lot do, or you can jump into some of the framework guides. And then there's the specific guides for each of these, like Next.js, or if you happen to use something like Vite, you have the description of how to set it up with Vite and so on. But this could even be much, much easier, so you don't even have to go to the Tailwind docs. And what I'm talking about is generators. Now, generators are not only useful for actually setting up a new project, but it can also be useful for adding stuff to an existing project. So here, for instance, let's create a new NX workspace. And X, for instance, comes with such generators built into their plugins. Now here I have a standalone app set up for React. And so if I open the package JSON, I have already a plugin installed, which comes with this novel slash React package. Now if I run npx nx list at novel React, I see a set of different generators that come with this plugin. And one of them being here to set up a Tailwind configuration. So if I run nx generate at novel React and then set up Tailwind, it asks me to choose the project. Now in this case here, I have the actual project here, which is my React application, and I have also an end-to-end -end test project, which happens to be with Cypress. Now obviously I want to add this to my React app, so I'm going to choose that. And what you can see now is it generates for me a post-CSS config, it creates a Tailwind config, it also updates my styles, and it updates the package JSON. So in the package JSON, we can see we now have auto prefix are installed, we have post-CSS and also Tailwind. If you look at the file structure, we can see here there's the Tailwind config that has been pre-generated with already some paths that need to be purged. There's also utility function that actually parses the dependency graph that NX has underneath. So if you import libraries that have Tailwind classes in them, they will also be included here and their globs will be dynamically calculated. There's also the post-CSS file that is already pre-configured to point the correct Tailwind CSS file. And also our application styles have been updated to include the Tailwind classes. And so with that, we can actually go to our app TSX file and just add some Tailwind stuff in there. And if we then serve our project, we can see Tailwind in action here. So this specific NX React setup uses Vite underneath, but obviously the exact same works also if you choose Webpack when you set up the project. But what about monorepos? NX is known for a monorepo setup, and the cool thing is those generators work across the board also inside a monorepo. So if during the initial setup we opted for a monorepo, we can leverage exactly the same generator. Now obviously our folder structure here looks different because we have now our React app that lives within an apps folder, because potentially here we could have multiple apps in this monorepo. But we can just go ahead and run our generator as we did before, and now it would give us the option to choose this React app. Now, if you don't remember these generators by heart, you can also install the NX console extension, which allows you then to run this generate command as a UI. And so we can search for Tailwind and we would find that setup Tailwind generator. It would present as a form where we can actually choose the application, fill out a couple of configuration inside that form, and then it gives us a preview of what would happen. So we can again see the post CSS would be installed in a React app, we get a Tailwind again, the styles would be updated, all our project JSON and packages would be updated. So this looks great, let's just run this. And now what we get is exactly the same setup, but now configured inside that React app that lives in the monorepo. And obviously this also works for Next.js. So let's say we have in this monorepo another Next.js application. So first of all, what we need to do is install the novel Next plugin, because that gives us the generators to first of all set up a Next app and then add Tailwind again on top of it. But once this has been installed, we can actually just go to the apps folder, right click, and NX console also gives those context menu entries and we just hit generate application, next application. Let's give it here next app as a name. Again, we have a couple of options that we can choose here, like using a Cypress setup or no end-to-end -end test setup, linting, uh, also whether we want to use actually a Jest as a runner or SWC for building the JavaScript files and TypeScript files. So let's just go with the defaults. And so now you get your Next.js application 
configured and ready to start. Now again, if you want to add Tailwind on top of next app, we just again run the same thing. So NX generate Tailwind, next app is already pre-selected because we right clicked on that menu entry. And again, we would get a setup that works with Next.js. Now in a monorepo setup, this becomes much more interesting because potentially we might want to share some of our Tailwind config. Let's say we have a set of common plugins that should be installed for all of our application or even some like top level company branding that we want to have present in all of the different apps. So what we can do to achieve that is actually extend the Tailwind config. So we can go to the root of our monorepo and have something like a Tailwind preset.js file, which could, for instance, look like the following. So here I reference a typography plugin, which you might want to have on all of our applications. So obviously I need to install that first. And once we have that installed, we can go to one of our Tailwind configs, for instance, our React application, and extend it there. So what we would want to do here is just require that Tailwind preset file that we defined. So this would be something like navigating out to the very root and then pulling in here that Tailwind preset.js file. Now, obviously, this is not ideal, especially if you move your app around in the future or even nest it more deeply. So the NX workspace comes with a novel dev kit plugin, which is meant for extending the workspace. And so we can grab a utility function from there which is called the workspace root, which allows us here to configure this path in a much nicer way, where we just join it with workspace root and then the actual file name. And so similarly, now we can just go to our next app and our Tailwind config there, and also add the actual extension inside here. And so with this, we have a Tailwind configuration that works even in a monorepo. So each of the applications have their own Tailwind config, but they extend from a root level preset that can pull in additional things to the actual application. And one thing you might have noticed is how the generators helped us throughout this process, because regardless whether we were in a standalone product setup or in a monorepo, we never even once had to go to the Tailwind docs, figure out which packages to install, nor where to configure Tailwind and how to configure it in a proper way. So if you enjoyed this, definitely like the video to spread it among your coworkers and teammates. Also subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss any future videos.